Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to discuss complex numbers here for a uh, few seconds. So, um, we all know that if we take the square root of 9, we're going to get 3. But uh, think about for a second, what happens when I take the square root of negative 9? What will my answer be? Will I get a negative 3? Will I get a positive 3? What will I get? So let's go ahead and see. And I get a, an error, a non-real answer error. So you remember a long time ago when we had, uh, when we talked about real number sets, I had told you that every number you've ever dealt with is a real number. Well, that all changes today. Um, these answers are not going to be real. They're actually going to be called complex or imaginary numbers. So let's go back and see what happens when we take the square root of negative 16. Uh, we should get an error, and we do, because there's no number that I can square to get negative 16. I can't square negative 4, because that's negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And I can't square positive 4, because that gives me a positive 16 as well. So we have to figure out some way to handle square rooting a negative number. So the way we're going to take the square root of a negative number is by using the letter i i is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1. You can't take the square root of negative 1, you just saw that. But uh, we're going to use i to stand for the square root of negative 1. Now this is going to be important when we get to solving a quadratic equation that does not hit the x-axis on the graph. Um, and that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, but for right now, i is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1. So how are we going to use it? Okay, so here's what it's going to, what it's going to look like. So let's simplify the square root of negative 16. All right, so I'm going to break it into two radicals. I have the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. So I'm, I'm allowed to do what I'm doing here. Um, okay, so I can simplify the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is just 4. All right, so that thing becomes a 4. Now, the square root of negative 1, I know, is equal to i. So that can just be substituted with an i. So now I have 4 times i, 4i. So the square root of negative 16 is 4i. Let's do it for the square root of negative 49. So I take the square root of 49, break it into two radicals, times the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of negative 1 is i. So 7 times i is 7i. Okay, so what happens when um, when I take the square root, it's not a perfect square. I don't get a 7 or a 4. What happens if there's still something left under the radical? All right, so these are a couple examples. Uh, I'm going to simplify the square root of negative 12. So I have square root of 12 times square root of negative 1. Now the square root of 12, 12 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have to simplify that like we have earlier in the chapter. So 2 times 2 times 3, I'm going to circle my group of 2s, because my index is a 2, so I'm going to circle my group of 2s, bring 1 out. So this becomes 2 square root of 3. But the square root of negative 1 is going to be an i, so my answer is going to be 2i square root of 3. Now, the reason that I put the i before is if I put it after the radical, like if I put it like this, it's hard to tell if that's actually under the radical or not. So in order to keep from doing that, in order to um, keep from getting confused, I always put the i in front like a coefficient. So my answer here is 2i square root of 3. All right, 5 square root of negative 32, same deal. 5 square root of 32 break it into two radicals, times square root of negative 1. Uh, 32 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos. So I'm going to circle one group of twos and another group of twos because my index is a 2. Bring one of each of these out. So 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20. And then I have a square root of 2 left over. But a square root of negative 1 is i, so I put my i in front of the radical in the coefficient, and there's my answer, 20i square root of 2.